All right, how about now? Hi. Uh, where's my Where's my video? One sec. I can't see your face. Where is it? There it is. Oh, hi. There we go. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Hi. <laughs> this is amazing. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Oh, wow. um, we'll introduce ourselves. I'm Francesca. Hi, Francesca. Um, so, hi. Hey. Oh wow. Hi. How many people are in there? Yeah. Four. Just yeah, four. Just yeah. Four. Oh, okay. So, That's not bad. Yeah, we're making a, a documentary for our high school, um, just for our uh, our film class. Cool. Yeah. Do you know I have done so many high schools in the last month? Uh, in fact, really? I, I did. I did one in Glasgow this morning. And wow. I'm doing Arkansas High School on Monday, and then uh, Ohio High School, which I had to bump because Trinity Broadcasting Network was here just a little while ago. Anyway, what That's can I do for you guys? Yeah. What are we doing? Um, so we just have a couple of questions. Oh, come on. You have a bunch of questions. Yeah, we have a bunch of questions. <laughs> Nobody just has a couple of questions ever. It's like, oh, we can do this in 15 minutes. No, no, no. problem. Did he get the joke? It's a cup of coffee. No time at all. No, it's all right. We're good. You, he can hear the Oh, there you oh, go. Yeah, right oh, we good? Good? We're back. What happened? We just lost connection. Oh, okay. For a second. We're... Oh, hopefully. Okay, it's, so. Hopefully it's not on my wait, side. Wait, oh, I think it's. I think it's my Wi-Fi. New York Wi-Fi. That's all right. You don't have a hard line. I think we're good now. All right. Yeah. Well, just let me know. If you want me to repeat anything, just, just, we're good. Sorry, All right. Thank you so much. No, no, no. Happy to do it. So let me, let me ask you before we do this. How did, how did you find, you saw the documentary on Netflix, didn't you? I did. I yeah. saw the documentary on Netflix and I have watched a bunch of your videos on YouTube as well. Okay. Um, and then I sort of just like found on the flat earth website with the cruise, your information. Okay. Yeah, so I hope that was all right that I reached out. I'm so offended, and how dare you? No, of course. Do whatever. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. We're to it's um, totally good. Sweet. Well, I'm so grateful that you're able to take the time to Happy it. to do it. As I tried to tell, uh, as I've been working with the director, uh, because the director hates Flat Earth, because because uh, we talk to younger people. I say, you don't have to worry about that. We already have the younger people, but that's fine. So, <laughs> hit me. What All you got? Right, cool. So, our first question, um, how did you get into the flat earth and what persuaded you that the earth was flat in the first place? Got it. How did I get into it? Well, we have to go way back when I was in my hallucinogenic drug phase. <laughs> no. Like not joking. No, <laughs> that's not a thing. So I was conspiracy bored. Uh, if you watch the documentary, that part is, is actually absolutely true, which is I looked at just about every conspiracy you could think of, hated Flat Earth. Everybody hates Flat Earth. The t-shirt reads, I became a Flat Earther because I tried to disprove it. And I made the huge mistake of actually looking at it. It's like, oh, it's on my bucket list. What's the worst that could happen? I'm going to look at Flat Earth. Yeah. And I remember feeling physically flushed when I clicked on it. And I thought that was really, really strange. Look, I'm older and everyone knows there's some weird, freaky stuff out there on the internet. You know, sites you should not be going to. Most of them involve naked people. And <laughs> I've, I've been to these sites and nothing has embarrassed me to date, you know. But when I clicked on Flat Earth, it was embarrassing. And I was going, whoa, what the heck? Why am, you know, I actually think I broke out in a sweat. And I thought, okay, there's something to this. And part of it was the conditioning. So that's how I got into it was I, I was just a challenge more than anything else. It's like, okay, flat earth. I should shut this thing down. Easy. Three days tops. Nine months later, I'm sitting there in front of my computer, just about ready to snap the keyboard over my head because I'm going, I can't prove the globe. I can't prove the globe. What the hell's wrong with me? And that's why I made the, the series of videos called Flat Earth Clues, and which was really a cry for help more than anything else. I put it out to the internet, said, internet, you're really smart. Tell me where I went wrong. What do you think the internet did? You think they came back and said, you're totally wrong? Nope, they came back and said, man, you might be right about this. I said, no, no, it can't be, it can't be. Um, what things helped me, what, what was, I'll tell you the thing, it's not even one of my five best proofs, but the thing that snapped me into it the thing that got my attention was Antarctica more than anything else, which was because our world is based off of greed and money and power. Uh, I know if you're younger, it's not as much. But when you're older, it's absolutely based on greed and money and power. 
and yet Antarctica is off limits. So when the the head of you, I mean, you saw the Admiral Byrd clip. So when the 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 youngest admiral in the history of the Navy says, "Oh yeah, the place is made out of money. There's coal and uranium and oil and minerals forever." And we might even be fighting over this. And then all of a sudden, everybody leaves the, the ice at the same time. And they put up a treaty that even now is ironclad that cannot be broken up until the year 2041 that says nobody can go down there to do anything for money. Find me a conspiracy that's bigger than money. And that's what really tipped me because I called BS on that. That's a plot hole. I love plot holes. I love good plots and movies. Writing to me is more important than just about anything in any part of, part of media. And I was going, no, no, I'm not buying it. There's no way we would turn that down. If there's money to be had, we're going for it, especially in the United States. I mean, look, we will frack in your backyard tomorrow if we can. And we will pay off your neighbors. We'll frack in their backyards. We don't care. And yet there's no there's no neighbors to even pay off down there. I mean, it's just snow and ice. There's no animal life, no plant life. And penguins don't count. And because they're only on the coastline anyway. And so that's that's what did it. That, that's what that's what tipped the scales for me. And then only later, when everyone started coming up with different proofs, uh, that's when it, it is in one of my top five now. But that's what that's what did it for me. That's what more or less was the tipping point that I said, yeah, I'm going to make the clues. Very cool. Um, so the next question I have. Yeah. Um, what is the concept of the flat earth? Just so that people are aware. And um, what proves that the earth is flat? Say it one more time. Do the whole thing one more time. Uh, what's the concept of the flat earth? If you could just describe got it, it, got so it, got it. Get the background. Got it. Then what proves it? Okay. You know what? I've got a model right behind me. Give me a sec. Hey, oh, perfect. perfect. Woo. Okay. If we're going to do this. If you're doing video, most of the time I do audio, but that's fine. No, we're doing so, both. earth, right? Right. Flat. Here's the, the small flat earth model, right? Oh, so I'll gotcha. give you the, I'll show you the big one first, so which is, okay, so the flat earth model, sorry, my audio is going to be, flat earth model, for example, what we're saying here is that the world isn't this little ball that's flying through space at five different directions with this tiny sheen of water over it and this wispy, smoky atmosphere on it, even though it violates the law of thermodynamics, which says that pressure can't exist against non-pressure without a container or a barrier. And that is, is that the flat earth is actually more like this, only with a dome on it. And that is that the world is flat and stationary. It's not flying through space. It's not going woo through space. Uh, the North Pole is actually at the center and all the continents are spread out organically around the outside. Kind of looks like this if you're looking from a map standpoint. But if you're looking at a continent standpoint, it's kind of like this. And Antarctica is the only continent that doesn't look like everything else. So Antarctica is not this island continent that looks like Australia over here. Uh, it is stretched around the outside, not necessarily like Game of Thrones. I'll have to bring it up because it's really trendy right now. And the first episode went really well, I thought. But the, um, the outer edge, the Antarctica goes out much, much wider. So the white part on this map would be only a fraction of what it really is. It'd probably be three, four times that size. And over the top of it would be a dome. Dome-like structure. Ooh, look at that. Uh, what the, and the dome, is the dome transparent? Probably not. Uh, it's probably uh, more opaque than anything. It's just a giant projection system. So what we're saying here is that the world is a building. It's um, with, four, with walls and a floor and a ceiling. And it is so big. Remember, this thing would be about 20,000 miles wide. It is so big that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until about 1960. And when they did, and that would have been the United States and Soviet Union, when they figured it out in 1960, they said, yeah, you know what? We're not going to tell anybody about this for a while. Because remember, you've been telling everybody for at least five centuries that it was this. Well, that's kind of a problem because all of science has built their foundations off of this model. If all of a sudden you come back and you say this, it's this, whew, potentially there's a big, big problem there. So as far as the proofs, uh, real quick, fast, I'll give you the five questions that I rattled off to a Georgetown professor. Let me pull them up really fast here. One sec. Oh, where are you? Request, requests. Five science questions. Okay. So there was a German television team 
they found me and they said, okay, we want to do a debate between you and, astro and an astrophysicist. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it very civil to where you guys aren't even going to see each other. So you're going to ask five questions. We're going to record you. We're going to give him the video. He's going to watch it. He's going to record our video. We'll go back and forth until you guys get tired. And they say, you start. I go, fine, I'll start. First one, uh, long distance photography, which is um, things going over the horizon. If you discount NASA, and that is if I came to you and I said, prove to me that the earth is a globe without using NASA, right? You would only have really two arguments. One would be ships going over the horizon and the other would be um, sticks and shadows, which most people don't know anyway. And, and since most people don't know geometry and trig, who cares? We'll just use boats going over the horizon. And that is... I would have said absolutely 10 years ago, I would have been right there with you. But HD technology has changed all that to where cameras are way, way, way better than they should be to where boats that would be gone. Remember, it's the curvature of the earth, curvature of the earth. Uh, mainstream science says it's eight inches per mile squared. And that's not supposed to scare you. If you remember your algebra, that means eight inches per mile per mile, which means eight inches times whatever it is. So three miles would be three times three which is nine times eight is 72. 10 miles is 10 times 10, which is 800 inches. 50 miles is 50 times 50 times eight inches, which is about 1,680 feet, give or take. That's a long way. Well, there's a problem there. And that is 50 miles, we shouldn't be able to see anything because that's 1,600 and change feet on the other side of the hill. It's behind the curve. It's gone forever. You can't see on the other side of a hill. We all know this. Well, HD technology, we can absolutely bring it back. We can bring it back all day long to where I put out a challenge to science. We can do this every day and the videos are amazing to where I say, show me an object at 150 miles or less that we can't see. Then and that should be impossible. And we see it all the time. Islands, lighthouses, they're always there and we can zoom in on them. The camera technology changed this. I, I think that we as a civilization have gotten to a stage where we now can detect the, the borders of our world. I don't think for... You know, first 5,000 years, we couldn't figure this out. And we didn't actually, the, the powers that be didn't figure it out until 1960. And it looks like the public's going to figure it out about now. Sorry, that was a long one. Second one, vacuum versus gravity of space, which is law of thermal dynamics says that pressure cannot exist without a container. Meaning the atmosphere on the globe versus the vacuum of space, which is outside it, right? How does the vacuum of space not rip off the entire atmosphere? Well, you're going to say gravity. That's the only answer you can give. Well, it's got to be gravity. No, gravity isn't nearly strong enough. Not even close. If you made a vacuum, I don't know if you're in a, like a two-room apartment or whatever. If there's an apartment above you and you turned it into a vacuum chamber and took a cork and your ceiling and unplugged it, you would all die. Well, you wouldn't die right away. You actually pass out first. But it doesn't really matter. All that air is going to go up there. And you're saying, well, what's the point? I'm going, well, why didn't gravity keep it in your apartment right now? Gravity is not strong enough the vacuum of space is super, super strong and it's never ever, no one can explain it. In fact, the, the, the short answer is the short question is how does, where is the bleeding edge of space? Where does our atmosphere end and space begin? Tell me how that works. Doesn't can't, it can't happen. And space, people don't ever talk about it. Also the, the, the second part of that would be the spacesuit. Spacesuit doesn't act, act, act that same way too. So if you're in a spacesuit, that spacesuit should turn into a basketball meaning it should go rigid almost immediately because all that air is trying to get out to the vacuum. And yet the astronauts are running around. They can move their arms and legs and manipulate their fingers and hook up electronics. It's impossible. Cannot happen. If the spacesuit is a lie, then all of it's a lie. But most people bought the story with the astronauts on the moon because nobody knows anything about physics. We don't teach it to anybody. Physics is left for the nerds. No offense if you guys are nerds or whatever. You're, I'm sure you're, you're wonderful, cool people, right? You all look cool, I think. Okay. Um, <laughs> Third is, and don't lie, it's okay. Um, don't like to make friends, kids. All right, so eclipse shadow, third one, um, the eclipse shadow, and that is the moon supposedly traveling around this thing is 2,000 miles wide. The earth is 8,000 miles wide, the moon is 2,000 miles wide, which is way too big anyway, but we won't go into that. Uh, 2,000 miles wide, and yet the blackout zone, remember from the great American eclipse a couple of years ago, the blackout zone is only 70 miles wide. Well, that's a 97% decrease. How does, how does that work exactly? Where the blackout zone, that we're, remember, we all, our model, the moon is only 50 miles wide anyway. That works way better because it's like you walking next to a building and the shadow of you shrinks down to the size of an action figure. It never, ever happens. Shadows never get smaller. They only get actual size or larger. We all know this. So I'm saying, okay, well, it's because it condenses down, it's convex, and that's, that's how it works. So, okay, fine. Then we'll go the opposite way, which is what happens when the earth is in front of the sun. The earth is 8,000 miles wide. It should create a 250 mile wide blackout zone, 
We never see the blackout zone. All we see is a blood moon. The blackout zone's never there. Why not? Science won't explain it. Fourth, moon temperature. There's only five. Don't worry. There's not ten. Fourth, moon temperature, which is, uh, everybody knows when you're out in the sun, it's 90 degrees in the sunlight and 80 degrees in the shade, right? Because the object blocks some of the, the radiation and therefore it's cooler, right? We all know that. In the moonlight, though, it's the exact opposite. And that is it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, but it's 60 degrees in the moon shade. It's warmer in the shade than it is in the light. Okay, what does that mean? I didn't even know this was a thing, but apparently in universities, it is a thing. And that is lasers. If you point a laser at something, not the one you have chase, you know, cats chase, but the ones that get hot, they, that generates heat. Laser generates heat, right? Well, if you change the frequency, you can actually make it cold. It's called a cool laser. So why, and we can see this with the moon up to 13 degrees Fahrenheit. You can test this with a point and click thermometer, buy it at 20 bucks at any hardware store. Why is the moon generating a cold light? Does that prove a flat earth? Nope. It does not, it does not approve of flat earth, but it absolutely destroys the relationship between the sun and the moon because the moon is supposedly reflecting the sun's light. Well, at the very least, it should be neutral. It should never go negative. It should not even be possible. The sun is self-illuminated, plain and simple. Number five, my favorite, which is the Van Allen radiation question. You can ask this to any of your science questions, science friends, which is, are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Yes or no? Simple question, right? Well, one of two answers. If yes, then how did the Apollo program, using only aluminum and plastic, which will not protect you from radiation, how did they make it through round trips to the moon? Nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody got even cancer. There's five of them still walking around today, although Buzz Aldrin is a little sketchy, a little twitchy. <laughs> nobody died. And then if you say, well, no, they're not deadly. Oh, really? You should go to the NASA website then because NASA.gov, there's a little movie there called Orion Trial by Fire about the Mars program. And they say that, oh yeah, by the way, we can't send manned test capsules because we haven't solved the radiation problem. What do you mean you haven't solved the radiation problem? You, you solved it back in the 60s. It's, it's solved. You did it flawlessly. Nobody's ever died in an astronaut suit because of radiation. What are you talking about this for? It's like the left hand doesn't even know what the right hand is doing. I sent the, the guy from Georgetown those five questions. That was it. He folded like a card table. That was, that was it. He goes, nope, we're done. That's it. And the segment never aired. And the Germans went home and that was it. Never heard from anybody ever again. So there you go. Between those five things. Now, do those five things prove with that the, the world is a flat domed structure, enclosed structure? Do, no, no. Can I prove to you right now? That it, is, uh, that it is this. No, I can't. But I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe. This is treated like a court case. I can create so much reasonable doubt. The only place you have left to go is something like this. I rest my case. Good night, everybody. Wow. Oh, <laughs> no, anyway, so there you go. There's, there's my five drive home points. That's amazing. Um, so... I have just a couple questions. Oh, you can, well, again, you can, you, guys, you can ask whatever you want. I, seriously, you're the last one I think of the day. So. Oh, wow, yeah. Well, I don't, oh, you're like booked. <laughs> well, no, no. I mean, I had one, two, three. I had five. Um, but you're the fifth. Wow, so, no, so it's cool. No, ever since, seriously, ever since that documentary, it's been nightmares. I can imagine, yeah. yeah. I was getting some, but I wasn't getting, I, I was amazed how many high schools and, and colleges were calling me. Anyway, wow. go ahead. We got. Um, ex can you explain like the community of the flat earthers and like what you know that means to you and like how the people interact and just what it is like being a part of this community? We recruit a lot from mental institutions and homes for the criminally insane. There's a lot of degenerates. Um, really, you're, you're looking at me like I, I, I'm actually saying something legitimate. No. No, no, no. They come from everywhere. No, the flat earth community is great. Uh, they do, do <laughs> come a lot from the conspiracy. Seriously. So when gullible, you, know, you look up gullible in the dictionary, that's, it's you. That, that's what I'm, that's what's happening here. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. Again, don't take it, whatever I say at face value. Um, and that's part of the thing is that is question everything. Don't take, uh, it's something I, I try to tell everybody, which is don't take my word for it. Do your own research, ask questions. Um, I'm just a guy, and which is why this thing has been resonating so well. I mean, people have been coming up with experiments I wouldn't have even have dreamed of. Uh, the community, though, did start from the, from the conspiracy world, no question, which is conspiracy people, look, we all know the world, 
there's a lot of lies in the world. We all know this. It's just a question of what you're willing to look at and what you're not. And I'm not talking about the, the super dark lies that are out there. Look, in, in every aspect of our lives, there's people committing conspiracies for their own selfish needs. And take your pick. Business, politics, sports, entertainment, journalism, even science. People do things for the wrong reasons. Um, and so the conspiracy crowd looks at those. And because of social media, that's really where it came from. That's where this whole resurgence came from. Social media has allowed people to share opinions that normally they wouldn't have such easy access to. And that's where they come from. And, and when they get into Flat Earth, it kind of opens up their minds to a whole bunch of different things. I mean, I've got hardcore conspiracy guys that will not look at Flat Earth because they think it's ridiculous. And that says something. It's like, really? You, you think the entire royal family is made out of lizard people and you will not look at Flat Earth seriously? And, and they're, they're, it's like, all right, fine. But they come around eventually. So that's where most of the groups come from. And then the rest of it's word of mouth. Or I think we've, we've kind of jumped away from even the internet and we're now kind of like water cooler talk, if you know what that means. You know, we're in offices, homes. Right. Yeah. Um, so you were labeled as like the king of the flat earthers and that's sort of like a very high title. Um, and we just wanted to know like what that means to you and how your life has changed because of all of this. <sighs> really? Yeah. All right. Bless you, my child, for saying that, and God be with you. But no, are you kidding? King of Flat Earth? Really? Because that's what I want? Uh, king of Flat Earth? No. There is no King of Flat Earth. I am, and I'm saying this as humble as possible, I am the freshman recruiter for a, or even just one of the freshman recruiters, probably the lead freshman recruiter, of a metaphorical, metaphorical university called Flat Earth University. Um, there are channels that are way bigger than me. There are people that are way better at other things. I just happen to put myself out there and I can give a fairly decent interview. So that makes it easier for the media because media, I hate to say this, and if you guys are like media specialists, no offense, um, but media is lazy, which is they generally, it's why Bill Nye gets on television so much. Bill Nye, the science guy, which is, look, the man does, he's done enough good interviews, he's decent on television, and he looks like a serious nerd, you know, a neo maxi Zoom dweeby type of guy. And, and even though, because, and the reason why they choose him is because um, your normal professors from universities are just really dry. They just, they just don't, it's like they answer in one syllable or two syllables. So, no, 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 King of Flat Earth, no, 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 no. I, there are some perks of, of doing what I do. But all it, it's just kind of snowballed. So once the first few interviews happen and you do a bigger thing, uh, people ask for you. People, what you don't know is media steals from other media. So shows will watch other shows and say, "What? Who? Who would they have on?" It's like, "Oh, we we should have him too." They'll watch. The, they won't even watch my whole interview. They watch for five minutes. And they're like, "Yeah, okay, he seems good enough." And then that just keeps getting bigger and bigger to where what did I do? Um, like the Today Show in Australia. Where'd that come from? I have no idea. They just called me. And because of them, like the radio stations around that who watched the Today Show picked it up. So, um, no, not the King of Flat Earth. No, 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 no. And what was the part, second part of that question? Just how everything has changed your life from... Uh, there, I will say this. Once I got into Flat Earth, this is all I do now. I mean, this is, this is my life. I mean, I, I used to be a fairly normal person. <laughs> living in Boulder, Colorado, just doing, you know, drinking wine and having popcorn and playing video games and watching movies and doing everything, everything else, everybody else does. I think that's what other people do. And this kind of just changed all that to where now I do public speaking events in, in fact, where am I going next? Like for, for example, I'm doing next week, I'm going to Auckland, New Zealand to do a flat earth thing there. Followed by immediately turn around, I do in Calgary, Canada, Stockholm, Sweden, UK, Mount Chester, California, Amsterdam, and I finish off the year in Dallas. And those, those are the ones I have booked. So how, how is that happening? What, how is that even possible? Flat Earth, really? Really? If you would have told me five years ago, so sorry, this, the, to end that, the answer to that question, if you would have told me five years ago, I'd be doing this now. If I go back in time in a time travel machine and say, oh yeah, by the way, Chuckles, you're going to be doing this. I'd, I would have laughed you out of the room. I would say, get out of here. No way. Here we are. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> mm. Yo. Indeed. 
So what made you devote your life to doing this? You do this now, like all the time. Like, what do you want from this? What do you want to achieve with everything? Um, well, eventually we're going to branch out into charitable organizations, literacy programs, world domination. Um, wait, wait, no, 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 what we're, what, what we're going to do. No, no, honestly, I have no control over this whatsoever. I, I treat this kind of like an amusement park ride where it just came into my living room one day. Everything, if again, you probably heard me say this, if I live long enough to write an autobiography, God help this, if that happens, it's going to be called unsolicited, meaning everything just happened on its own. I didn't have to do a thing. Uh, like the, the people that called me up and said, hey, how would you like to do a re weekly radio show? It's like, okay, sure. And then a London publishing company. Hey, well, turn your clues into a book. Be great. It's like, okay. Um, and then like Google contacting me and saying, maybe you should monetize your channel and so we can make money too. It's like, fine. Um, and then so on and so on. Um, so I'm not doing, I'm not really doing anything. What made me dedicate? No, God, no. I'm just rolling with it. I decided at some point, um, for lack of a better term, I decided not to fight the world anymore. Uh, and there's some people that do, you know, what, what, what's the old thing we hear in movies, uh, fighting your destiny, whatever was supposed to happen. Apparently this is it. So I just threw my hands up and resigned myself to saying, you know what, whatever, whatever happens with my phone calls and emails, I'm just going to say yes to pretty much everything. And that so far, it's been working really well. Four years, I'm not going to regret a single moment of it. That's very cool. Hmm. Um, so just like another part of our documentary, we interviewed pretty much all of the science teachers at our school. <laughs> How'd that go? Did you bring oh, up yeah. Flat Earth to them? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That went over like a ton of bricks. What uh what they have to say? Um so they brought up seasons and you know the <laughs> that's, that's, and, um, that's old school. Know, gravity, okay. gravity and the sun want, and all that. Shadows. Do you want to do it in and order? Shadows, um you know if you stand on like a corner and you see your shadow and you can see the sun go in a um Yep, sticks, in a sticks and shadows argument. Okay, do you want me to respond to all of them? If you could. Okay, give me, give me, give me the first one. Seasons. Seasons. Yep. Seasons. Okay, seasons is easy. First of all, the the heating and cooling on this thing is not going to be done by just the sun. Remember, the sun wouldn't be hundreds of thousands of miles wide. It's only it's exactly the same size as the moon, and it travels around the top of this thing like a mobile around a child's crib. It's still an incandescent light bulb, so it does generate heat. However, as far as the seasons go, and it's very tricky. Um, and I know this dates me because you guys don't know what a record player is. Uh, but I a needle. There. Really? There's a there's a record yeah. over there. Awesome. Yeah, I have who's my records here? Who's into vinyl? You're into vinyl. Uh, awesome. I, I, I am. That's really cool. This, this one's Elvis. Well, of course, if you're gonna buy El seriously, if you're gonna buy Elvis. It's got to be vinyl. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Don't that sacrilege to put them on on digital. Okay, so uh, it would. Sorry, the sun and the moon wouldn't travel in the same path. So like a needle on a record player. Sorry, I keep getting these sound bites in my head whenever I say a needle on the record. So, uh, needle on a record player, it's not going to take the same path. Remember, the, the longer the song plays, the further in the, the needle on the record goes in. That's what the sun's doing. The sun is not taking the same path every time. It's taking a slightly different path like a record player. Um, the trickier part would be the Antarctic sun, and I, they probably didn't ask about that, but we'll get into that later. So that's, how, that's the seasons. That and, the, remember, the heating and cooling... The sun is only part of it. Uh, the jet stream, which is up above, would control some of it, and that's no different than an air conditioner. And then the underwater conveyor system, which most people don't even know about, that's a giant, uh, like, it's like the jet stream, but in the oceans. That generates massive amounts of energy. That controls, actually, most of our weather patterns. And then, of course, the magma system underneath, which only goes down, as far as we can tell, less than 10 miles, because we can't drill any further than 10 miles. What was the second one? Um, the sun, which you sort of covered. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, the sun, again, incandescent light bulb, uh, whereas the moon is just an LED nightlight, uh, approximately the same size, between 30 and 50 miles wide, and traveling a big circle above us. Um, and you were talking about the, the jet thing? Oh, the jet stream. The, you guys know yes. about the jet stream? Yeah, the jet stream um, is this massive air current system, which actually travels in a big loop around this thing, but on a globe, it kind of goes, you know, like a roller coaster which doesn't make sense and that is kind of like it's one of the reasons why when you're up in fact planes try to get in the jet stream imagine a path like it's like a river of air 
up above that travels over 100 miles an hour, in some cases over 300 miles an hour from what I understand. And if a plane can get in it, they can ride it. And, you know, they can they can use it for better speed or better fuel economy. But it also hurts them because sometimes you can't avoid it. So, like, when you're going from um, east to west on the United States, you will run through some of that jet stream because the jet stream goes from west to east. And so you're actually going against the river current. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, if you ever get a chance, look into it. Very cool. Yeah. Sorry, what was um, the other one? Uh, gravity. 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 Oh, God, yes. Okay gravity and this that's a common myth with the whole flatter thing and people say oh the flatter society thinks that this is disc flying through space upwards at nine feet per or nine meters per second per second no 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 gravity uh let me use the the science version first neil degrasse tyson uh the most famous scientist in the world even though a lot of scientists hate him uh say that gravity they can't i'm oh, sorry i don't want to butcher his quote we can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does. We can only tell you the symptoms of gravity because we can't replicate it on a standalone basis somewhere else with a unified field. And that's what mainstream science says. So they say, but their best guess is this magical molecular force that pulls things down to the center of the earth. And we say, well, it's just a magical molecular force that pulls things straight down. There's almost no difference in, in our model between gravity, um, between gravity on a globe and gravity on a flat earth. The only difference is that they say it's based on mass and we say, well, it's kind of based on mass. It could be electromagnetic. We don't know. Um, in the simulated world, it's a physics engine, um, kind of different, no different than um, not to get off on the virtual reality side of things. But I, what, what are the kids playing nowadays? Fortnite. There you go. Fortnite. Stop. Or, or <laughs> I know I hate Fortnite and I hate Minecraft even more, kids. So, um, but is two things between Fortnite and Minecraft. First off, because I remember I used to play video games for a living back in the day. So I was there when it was all being built. Um, and that is all simulations. I don't care if it's GTA or Fortnite or Warcraft or whatever. They're all built on perfectly flat worlds. Absolutely flat. It's just a big, in fact, it's like this, only it's in a box. It's a square. Why do programmers do that? Because it's easy. That's the only the programmers are notoriously lazy. Why do we build a curve into this? No one's going to know anyway. So what's the difference between this and this world here? If no one's going to know anyway. Why wouldn't it be flat? If everyone thinks it's a curve, you just tell them it's curved. So it, again, one of the big arguments, in fact, let me, sorry, let me, I, I digress sometimes. I'll use the line from George Orwell. You know who he is? George Orwell, the guy that wrote 1984. Okay. okay, George Orwell. He did this wonderful quote back in 1946, and he's not a flat earther, but he was talking about the responsibility of science. That people believe science no matter what they say. They just, it's like, well, science said it. it's the man in the white coats. They know they're smarter than us. They must be right. So when you ask somebody in 1946, and he said this, uh, why they think the, the world is a globe, their argument is always the same. It's like, well, we just know. We, we know this. It is known. There you go. Game of Thrones reference. I'm throwing it at you. It is known, right? That it's a globe. And then you push him and you say, well, how do you know exactly? Remember, it's 1946. NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. How did everybody in the world know that this is what the world looked like in 1946? It's not because they knew. It's because they were told. All you have to do is show them this. And you show people this for even 12 years, going through first grade through 12th grade. They're going to believe it. And if you show their fathers and their fathers' fathers and so on and so on, generations, they're going to defend it. So there you go. What else besides gravity? What else did they have? Anything else? Uh, the shadows. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sticks and shadows argument, which is the other. Uh, well, it's good that we got into this, which is sticks and shadows argument. I believe that was from Eratosthenes back in the day. And he says he's using geometry to try to prove the globe. Well, there's a problem there. First off, and I'm not trying to be mean in any way. I'm not pointing this towards you. I'm pointing this towards civilization. And that is geometry. Math is not going to save you, which is the average person on the street doesn't even know algebra let alone geometry or trig or calculus or quantum mechanics or any of that stuff. And that is sticks and shadows argument. And every scientist will tell you this. In fact, you can go back to whoever said that, if you remember who said it, and you can tell them this. It's like, yeah, but doesn't it work the exact same if the sun is really, really close and really, really small? What they don't tell you is it's like, oh yeah, sticks and shadows works really great. As long as you assume that the sun is 400,000 miles wide and 93 million miles away. But what if it was only 3,000 miles away and 50 miles wide? Wouldn't the sticks and shadow thing work the same? Well, yeah, but it's not. Yeah, how do you know? 
but it's not science gravity then they leave that's that's their, their argument so there you go that's that's the sticks and shadows argument completely and you can do this yourself all you'd have to do is take a little disc like you can take anything on the floor put a nail or whatever it is on the floor and take a flashlight turn all the lights off don't get weird on me to turn all the lights off and then shine the flashlight around it just move this watch what happens to the shadows you're saying what's your point I'm, my point is i'm going you're doing that with a very close light source that's very very small so it's perfect it's perspective that's all it is it works the exact same way but science doesn't want to address it what else you got um oh i have one more um, that's it so one more all right <laughs> um, well so what would the direct like measurements for the flat earth be like if like the circumference because obviously the circumference of the globe wouldn't be the same no no you're right that's a good one actually okay best guess i think my, my friend and i worked this out one day um because he was using some map some map making software and that is um the across you know from point to point would probably be about twenty thousand miles 20 21 22 000 miles give or take now going around <laughs> that would be huge that would be massive that would be i think like sixty thousand miles give or take, which is, you know, kind of what we're, what we're thinking. We're, you know, we're talking about the, remember what I said earlier, which is we're talking about an object, a building, and this kind of makes sense. And that is, remember that up until recently, let's say again, let's say that you are in a building that's so huge that even your best and brightest couldn't figure it out until the technology got to a certain level to where they could explore areas. Remember, let's say you're the King of France in 1500, right? King of France, 1500. What do you got? You got wooden ships and you got horses. You got nothing to be able to figure this thing out at all. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to try to get those out to Antarctica? You're going to die in the snow. You're not doing anything. It wasn't until we had decent airplanes. And in fact, that's exactly what we started doing. So if Admiral Byrd did his first exploration to the North Pole in 1926, 1928, immediately they sent him out to the Outer Rim. And they had him flying with the best, best pilots, best equipment for 30 years in circles just trying to figure out where the outer marker was and the even then they pretty much gave up until roughly well he went on television which is that great clip from tv where he goes on 1954 and saying yep they'd pretty much given up let's just make money and then they figured it out so i don't know where i was going with that sorry i'm old i just kind of try i'm sorry what else what, what else is on your mind um no. Well, what about like the curvature? I know that that's like a huge like oh curvature. What do you want to know about um, the curvature? Um, how do you like prove? How from... do you prove it? Because you can prove it by not finding it. By that I mean, I had mil. In fact, there's a there's a playlist on my channel. I don't, I don't know why more people don't look at it. I mean, it's literally called um, testimony shows by subject matter experts. I had, I didn't have to find these guys. They found me. All branches of the military, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, engineers, pilots, uh, air traffic controllers, transportation experts, you name it. They all came at me and they all said the same thing. They said, yeah, we've heard about the curvature and we've also heard about the spinning of the earth. We've never seen it, but we know it's there, right? We know it's there. We're told this. We're told, when you're told this, when you're six years old, you want to see it. You got to remember that I have people to this day, and you guys may be even one of them, that said, oh yeah, I can absolutely see the curvature of the airplane, or curvature from an airplane, or a mountaintop. I've even had people say they can see the curvature from the beach. It's like, really? Can, can you? Because Neil deGrasse Tyson says you, no civilian will ever, ever be able to see the curvature. And yet people, it's not that they see the curvature, they want to see it. And that's straight out of Orwell, which is, you know, if you tell somebody something long enough, they're going to start to believe it. They'll, their vision will absolutely. And, I, and so my challenge to people, I say, fine, you think you see the curve? Take a picture of it, put it on a laptop or a monitor or whatever, hold a straight edge up to it. Tell me if the curve's there. If it is, email to me. I will quit Flat Earth tomorrow. That was four years ago. Nobody's done it. And that's, again, because they all they all think they see it. It's kind of like the, um, here's an argument for you. And I, I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember it because it was a few years back. Remember the whole black dress, white dress thing? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's still a thing. I'm sure people share it around. It's like, okay, who's right? Because remember, you had people in a room, right? Four of them saw the white dress and six of them saw a black dress. Who's right? 
Technically, they're both right. Neither of them are lying. You could put them on polygraphs and they both come off true. So what's the problem? Exactly. You know, the, the human mind is incredibly complex. I'll, I'll give you another example real fast. It was one of my clues. I don't know if you remember this, which was um, if you're ever seeing a car or a train or a plane and something, a window next to you moves and you don't know if you're moving or they're moving. People freak out in traffic jams all the time because all of a sudden you're like, wait, is that car moving or I'm moving? And what I'm getting at is there was a, a psychological study done, oh God, years ago, where they put people in wooden cars, like on tracks, and they either moved the car or they moved the wall in front of them. And human beings absolutely could not tell what was moving. We are really, really bad at perception. Really, it's like it's almost like we're genetically engineered to believe an illusion. It's kind of like why some people get sick when they watch roller coasters on television from a first person perspective. Why? Why was that happening? You know, you're not on a roller coaster. Why are you feeling ill? It's because your mind is kicking in. So it's really sorry. I know I'm taking a long winded approach to this, but the curvature is kind of a personal thing to me because I run into people all the time that say they, they see it. And then when I come back and I go, yeah, prove you see it then they can't. But they won't, they still won't be on our side. A lot of them won't, but some will. Some eventually kick in and it's like, all right, I admit, I can't find it. So, there you go. What else? Um, why, why do you think that there's such a, um, like a, a hard, um, <laughs> like a, people always clash, like, and they are always so against this idea of why the is it so Why is it so polarizing? Yeah. Exactly. And like, why do people characterize and create stereotypes about people who do believe other than what they've been taught? Are we talking about generically what they've been taught or this in particular? That. Okay. Yeah. Um, it is the most polarizing topic ever uh, more than, I don't know, women's rights, gay rights, black rights, Jewish rights, uh, stem cells, abortion. It is the most polarizing thing I've ever seen. Why is that? Um, this is why. Right here, what you're looking at. Where, why do I even have this in my hand? These globe icons are everywhere. That's why. Um, a perfect example would be in your, when you're in a classroom, and I, I depends on what your school you're in, but I think most of them, and that is what do you see in your classroom always? You see an American flag sitting in a corner every freaking day of every freaking year, American flag, and you also see one of these probably lying around there somewhere. Well, the American flag, what does it stand for, right? It's where you live. It's your country. Right? And, and if you have it from first grade up until the point you graduate, heck, well, some people are even willing to enlist and fight for it, right? Even though, you know, you're just fighting for a country and I, I get it. What's the difference between American flag and this? Not that much. It also says this is where you live. It's an icon like anything else. The only thing we don't do is we don't have it on a flag. We just have a three dimensional version of this. It's amazing. Look, you, look up any CIA manual if you can find one. Uh, and that when they talk about conditioning and this is, I mean, you show somebody, um, uh, an icon from age six until age 18, that's a powerful, powerful thing to where uh, I, I challenge people that I talk to. I say, look, when they get mad at me, we get all worked up. I go, do you even know why you're angry? You're not angry at me. So why are you angry? It's like, well, cause it's stupid. It's ridiculous. Really? Why? Why is it ridiculous? And they don't know why. It's, it's strictly because it's been drilled into our head so many times. And I'm not going to blame the film companies. Look, the, the, because this thing isn't trademarked, corporations use this thing all day long, and a lot of them do. I mean, movie companies and transportation companies and you name it. This thing is everywhere. So that's why. That's why it's so polarizing. That and one more thing. It's the only conspiracy you can't walk away from. Which is, if you don't believe in 9-11 or, or JFK or Pearl Harbor, or take, take your pick. There's all sorts of them out there. You don't have to look at them. You can just bury them in the desert and you just turn the page. You never have to look. But this, this is a problem because this is where you are. So if I say, nope, it's not this, it's this. Well, then you're kind of running into a whole Matrix scenario, aren't you? And that is, remember the line from the Matrix, that really old movie that was before you were born? Uh, which uh, there was a line in it that said, uh, we don't free minds after a certain age because they can't. Um, they, they, the cement is pretty much hardened and people have a hard time. I, I had a guy in a radio show call me up and, and say, how dare, how dare you young men, which is weird because I'm older. He goes, how dare you young men tell me the world isn't what I think it is. That's what you're basically doing. It's like, yeah, by the way, this, all this, 
not really what you think. That freaks people out. It's again, try to walk away from that. It's tough. It's it's kind of like um, uh, last thing on this is uh, it's kind of like putting a marble in a paint can. You put it in their head, try to shake that marble out. You can't do it. It's stuck in there, and they try to resolve it. And like anyone, the the T-shirt reads literally. Uh, I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk it. And everyone that tries to debunk it, it's uh, if anyone's ever been out to California, the it's something called La Brea tar pits. You ever heard of that? La Brea tar pits, anybody? So there's these tar pits, kind of like pools of really, really thick oil, right? Well, like a, like a cub would fall into it and then the mother would try to get the cub and the mother would go into it. And then a predator would come along and say, oh yeah, there's some free meal. The predator would go in and these things would just keep sucking down prehistoric animals all day long. Um, that's kind of what this is, which is if you look at it long enough, you're going to get sucked in. There's nothing you can do because you have to resolve it. It's kind of like trying to untie some knots in your head. And by the time you're done, you have to, you either have to say, okay, I'm just not going to look at it for the rest of my life. Or you realize that you can't prove this anymore. Not convincingly. Now you may still have a few aspects like, well, it's probably, but this starts looking better and better. So anyway. What else? Um, what? So would you say if they lied about the moon landing, yeah. they could also lie about this? Like, oh, not no, not just that. Okay, no, no, it's a good question. Um, uh, that is, it's way worse than you think. <laughs> they didn't just they didn't just lie about the moon landing. The whole reason the moon landing happened was because of this. Meaning, eventually, you have to militarize space. You have to do it. Um, if the world is, if you find out the world is not a globe, you have a, you have a big problem on your hands, which is eventually someone is going to, when the technology reaches a certain level, people are going to want images of this. People are going to want, remember there were no pictures of this thing in the 1950s and even the 1960s, NASA waited a long time before they took the first shot of it. And it wasn't until 1972, they waited until their last mission. Wouldn't you have taken it like Apollo one through Apollo 16? You waited until the going home on the 17th. It's like, oh, I better take a shot of Earth. And then you, that was the only shot they had for 43 years. So uh, when it comes to Apollo, and I can send you, I'm like, maybe I will after I'm done, I'll send you a single image of Apollo. And it's from Apollo 12. And it's a high-res shot. Look at it and tell me how many things you think are wrong in that shot. I can find at least half a dozen, and they're huge. Apollo is one of those things that aged really badly really really badly historical documents are notorious for aging but you know but like vietnam footage never aged as badly as this and this was sort of the same era so why did it age so badly it's because it was done in a studio and our studio techniques were not very good and they cheated for production values i'll just rattle off a couple just off the top of my head um no stars ever and you say, well, the exposure was wrong. It's like, really? So you weren't going to bring in some different exposure cameras just so you could take some starry shots? Nobody's ever taken a starry shot of anything from out from outside of the Earth, ever. Now, I, yes, there are some shots from the ISS, but that was only much, much later, and it wasn't at the moon. No moon shot is ever done. And because the Americans screwed it up, anyone else that ever said that they went, like the Chinese, never. Is Israel supposedly landed there a couple days ago? Yeah, whatever. Uh, and the Russians never went back. Uh, two other things, shadows converging on the moon. That's, a, that's probably the biggest one. And that is shadows always will be in one direction. One light source, the sun, shadows are always one direction. They're in, they're in multiple directions. And that's because they have a local light source. Um, no blast crater, no splay pattern, 10,000 pounds of, of thrust landing on a, on an ashy surface, no splay pattern at all. No feats of strength. Uh, you've probably heard of the old movie, white man can't jump. A white man can jump on the moon. And that is, look, a 180-pound man would weigh 30 pounds. You could have amazing vertical leap on the moon. Even if your suit weighed 150 pounds, it, you would still be able to do amazing things. And they never did. So, sorry. The moon landing, absolutely. Do not believe the Americans, whatever they say. Also, don't forget. Sorry, I got to ramble here for a second. Don't forget that NASA is DOD. NASA is uniquely military. They were founded on the still-burning embers of the Nazi war machine. Um, they, yeah, they wear white uniforms. They smile for the camera. They don't carry guns, but that's just cause it's good for TV. You know, just cause you wear white uniforms doesn't mean you're the most innocent group in the world. They're black hats, plain and simple. What would you have to say about, um, 
And then they just went to Saturn, and they have all the footage of Saturn and mm. all that. Okay. Stuff. All right. Every story that you see about space is a good question. Every story that you see about space is what I call a space beat, meaning they don't care if you read the article, they don't care if you look at the graphics. All well, they might actually want if you want you to look at the graphics just for a second. All they care about is you read the headline for a split second, which is, "Hey, there's a hexagon on the top of Saturn." Why? Because you're on a globe. That's all they care about. Face on Mars, globe. We're reclassifying Pluto, Clo globe. Oh, the Mars rover, globe, blah, 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 blah. All it is is doing is reinforcing this. That's all they care about. They don't, they do not care. The, the stories are so terrible nowadays anyway. There's a hole in the ISS. Oh, we just took a picture of the black, of, of a black hole, which of course we tore apart in two hours. It's a, it's actually a, a supernova shot from 1987 which we could show you. I mean, they, they replicate stuff all the time. They're just so lazy. Their production value, even though they're getting $54 million a day, and that's just NASA, their production value is terrible. Oh yeah, NASA gets massive amounts of money now. Look up, um, and it's public money. It's not That's not a secret. Um, you, you think the ISS production value is good? Look up something called ISS hairspray, ISS wires, ISS CGI. There is no reason why women's hair should be, like your hair, would be sticking straight up like the Bride of Frankenstein. That's not how anti-gravity works. Your hair would be like a swimming pool. It'd be flowy and everywhere. Not to mention, nobody should have hair in the ISS. Treat it no different than a swimming pool, which is, everyone should have shaved heads and caps. Ugh, sorry. So many things I do wrong. So many things I do wrong. If I worked for the government, it would be a way tighter ship. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? I think we're good. And this thing has been flashing low battery for about half an hour. I think that was, okay. that was amazing. Okay. Hey, Thank um, you so I'm, much. I've, so I've, great. I'm sorry. What? That was so great. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I, I'm, I've got the audio. I, I know you guys are probably recording video. I've got the audio on this, so I will drop when I'm done. I will drop the audio file into Skype for you. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, okay, that's what I do. So, um, and so you can use it for whatever you want. Uh, feel free, you have my consent to use this for whatever project you feel you need it for. And uh, if any of your teachers want to reach out or anybody, or if you need to, if you want to talk to anybody in the community that, that, that you ran into or is like, oh, yeah, that'd be neat to talk to, let me know and I can put you in touch with them. So... Amazing. Thank yeah. you so much thank for everything. Oh, and it just and... Yeah, thank you so much. Very, very welcome. Nice meeting you all, people behind the camera <laughs> and you back there. Yeah, seriously. It was it was fun. And uh <laughs> hey, <laughs> nice shirt. Bat see Batman. I, I love that. It's retro. I used to own a comic book shop back in the day. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. Alrighty. We appreciate it. Um, yeah, bye. Have a nice day. Bye guys. Bye. See ya. Bye.